All right, so I wanted to go over a problem where you have a mass pulley system, and I wanted to be able to give you an example of how to solve for the actual force of tension of the string. So, like any time we do these, step one is going to be to actually create force diagrams. So I'm going to create force diagrams right on our objects here. Okay, so mass two is going to have the force of gravity acting on it, and it's also going to have the force of tension of the string. Now we know these aren't going to be equal, so we can't say that they are. Mass 1, larger mass, has the force of gravity on it, also has force normal because it's sitting on a table. Okay. We also know then there is a force of tension because of the string, and then we're told there's a coefficient of friction now, so we know that there's also a force of friction acting on the block. Okay, and so really this is no different than any other problem we've done before. We just got to solve for the forces that we can solve for. So for example, you know, I have my force of gravity here. I know it's mass 4 times gravity, so 4 times 9.8. I end up getting 39.2 newtons. Don't know what this is yet. Force of gravity on this object, 10 kilograms times 9.8. That means this is 98 newtons. And then my force normal, I can not say, is equal because it's not accelerating in the vertical direction. So the normal force here is also 98 newtons. Okay. Now, force of friction, we learned that if I want to find the force of friction and I have a coefficient of friction, force of friction is going to be equal to mu times force normal. And so my force of friction then is going to be equal to mu, which is 0.3, times my force normal, which is 98 newtons. So force of friction then ends up being... 29.4 newtons, okay? And so the first thing, I guess, if we want acceleration, that kind of translates to us that we're going to be finding an unbalanced force to get an acceleration. So unbalanced force is going to be, well, these cancel. The tension's the same, so the tension is just connecting these two. So really, the unbalanced force is going to be the result of our pull down, 39.2, and our resisting force, 29.4. Uh, so if I want to find my unbalanced force here, okay, it's going to be the difference between our pulling force, 39.2, and our resisting force, 29.4. Okay, and so subtracting those, the unbalanced force for the system ends up being 9.8 newtons. And now that I know that force, I can then go back and apply it to FUMA, F-U-M-A, for the system. So our unbalanced force is going to be 9.8. Our mass is going to be both masses, the 4 kilogram mass plus the 10 kilogram mass, because it's the mass of the system, times A. So this becomes 9.8 is equal to 14A. Doing the algebra to solve for our acceleration, we get 0.7 meters per second squared. Okay. Now, what we just did there is not new compared to what we've been doing in the past. Where this becomes new is when I'm trying to solve for my force of tension. Okay, If I want the force of tension, the trick to find it is to know about, first off, the acceleration, and then you can go back and you can use your force diagrams to solve for what the tension should be. So if I'm looking to solve for, say, the force of tension using this mass, what the trick that I like to do is actually totally disregard half of your force diagrams and just use one of them. So to find force of tension, I'm going to consider just the hanging mass. And so I know the force of gravity on the hanging mass is 39.2 newtons. And I know there's a force of tension up that's not as big as the force of gravity down. Okay. I also know that I have an acceleration of 0.7 meters per second squared. So for just this mass, I can find the unbalanced force acting out of between these two. Fu ma, and that's going to be 4 kilograms times 0.7. So my unbalanced force here is going to be 2.8 newtons. And so what that tells me is these two forces are in a tug of war, 39.2 down, and there's a force of tension up. Since I know this is going to accelerate down, my unbalanced force means that 39.2 is 2.8 larger than my force of tension. So if I want to find my force of tension, it's going to be 39.2 
minus 2.8, which gives me 30, what is it, 30, 29.4, excuse me. So this ends up being a force of tension. So this ends up being a force of tension of 36.4 newtons. Okay. Now, we can solve for our force of tension using the hanging mass, or the other way we could do it is if we go back, disregard the hanging mass now, and just use the mass on the table. So I'm going to redraw my force diagram real simple. Okay. I have my force normal, my force of gravity. Both of those are 98 newtons. I have my force of friction, and I have my force of tension. Force of friction we found to be 29.4 newtons, and my force of tension, well, we have to solve for that. And we're going to do it the same way. Again, remember, we're disregarding the other mass, but we'll use FUMA, FU is equal to MA, for this mass as well. We can solve our unbalanced force because the mass is 10, the acceleration is 0.7, so our unbalanced force for this mass is 7 newtons, which means my force of tension is going to be 7 newtons larger than my force of friction. So 29.4 plus my 7 newtons of unbalanced force gives me 36.4 newtons, which is the same force of tension that I found over here. And again, we know they should be the same because it's the same strength. So just wanted to give you guys an example of how we can solve for force of tension we need acceleration to do so, and again, remember the trick that I like to use is to just forget about one of the masses to solve the force diagram for the force of tension of the other.